they oh, the thing I remember about her is that she loved cats and uh, that she always had a cat that was as big as any big dog. Grew huge cats and, and I used to like to go to her house and then I said my dad used to take us riding every night. Well, one of the things we would do was visit different relatives you see. We'd go to their houses but, and I used to love to go to their house. Uh, and I used to like to go because of the uh, the cats. So do you like cats? I like cats if they belong to somebody else. <laughs> I don't want one for me. I said, I've never seen them. No, 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 no. Okay, now how uh, she died kind of young, right? Relatively young, yeah. What, now, happened? what happened? She to was her? murdered. Do you know the chances of that? Or? Uh, partly. Uh, it wasn't Leon, was it? No, it wasn't Leon. But but I think she'd been uh, uh, stepping out on Leon and, uh, and stepping out with a, with a white man. And this was back in the 19... Yes, and his name was Mahan, I'll, I won't forget. Mahan had a limp. And anyhow, I remember him coming when they found Murtis in her car, you know, and she had a hole in her head. <laughs> Did Mahan... And killed her. And soon, whenever they, the police came to uh, talk to him, I, I didn't see that, you know. But when they came, my grandfather, Willis, told him, I know who it is, and I know where he is. He took them wherever this guy, out in the, in the country somewhere, and took them to him. And they arrested him. Did he go to prison? Uh, uh, probably for about two, three months. <laughs> Wasn't that big a deal back then? Though? No. Mm. Uh, but, um, yeah, she was killed. Mm. Now the next one you have is Mary? Mary. Who's Mary? Mary, first they call her Teeny. And her last name was Henderson. She married Carl Henderson. Where did she live? Columbia. Did she have any kids? Three. You remember their names? Tommy was the oldest. Um, that was Carl. Carl, his name was Carl too. And Tommy is probably a nickname, and I don't know the middle name. The next one was Louise, and she uh, they called her sister. And the next one was Herschel. And where where are those kids now? Tommy and sister, there's a good chance that they could still be living. If they are, they're in the Sacramento area, California. You lost contact with them? Yeah. <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> Why is that? We, uh, I didn't like their lifestyle, okay? You know, my daughter lived in Sacramento. Yes. I never told her that she had second cousins that lived in Sacramento. You didn't want her to contact them? I didn't want her to contact them, right. So uh, you didn't like them way back when or this, uh, sometime later? Well, I knew them. I didn't like them way back when, um, you know, some of the things that I heard that they were into, you know. And uh, and I also knew that they were they could really be a pest. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't want them to bother Connie, my daughter. So when's the last time you spoke to either one of them? Uh, the last time I spoke to uh, Tommy, let's see, we were living on Bessie, he came through here. He made a career of the Army, and uh, he'd show up every now and then. Uh, and um, he came to our house, and he met Lottie and uh, whatever kids we had then. Uh, now he wasn't a piss then. He wasn't. Uh, he didn't bother us. But I, I, I heard he might have gotten into some, you know, uh, drugs or something later on. That's why I didn't want it. And then uh, his sister, uh, uh, the one we call sister Louise. Um, I was in the service the last time I saw her, and I got out of the service in 1956. Um, so it's been a long time since I've seen her. However. The two of them came through St. Louis um, a couple of times. Uh, once they tried to get in touch with me and didn't. We just 
left the message at the, at the house. We were on Bessie. But once since I've been here on Lindo, the two of them came through here. Um, there is a reunion of all residents of Columbia, Missouri, who have ever been residents there ever before. Once every two years, I think it is. They call it the black and white reunion. And people who ever lived in Columbia come there, and it's a great big affair. Do you ever go? I have never gone. Lottie and I are supposed to go to the next one. Uh, but anyhow, they go to that every now and then. That year, when they came through here, they came, and uh, on their way back, going to the airport, they called. I wasn't here, but they talked to Lottie. And they must have been feeling their oats or the halfway booze or whatever. But they laid Lottie and me particular out, telling me I should go and take care of my grandmother and my, and, and my uncle, the ones in Columbia that I've been uh, taking care of for years. <laughs> this is their... Um, their same thing. Their <laughs> uncle and their grandmother. Yes, the same thing. And what were they doing to take care of them? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They just went by and visited, you see. <laughs> so that's that's about the last contact you had with them. That's the last time I had anything, uh, any contact with them, right? Now, what about Mary? Did she? Uh, obviously, she's dead. Now, she Mary dead? died. Uh, I was in the service, and I was in the service from fifty-two to fifty-six, so it had to be somewhere in there. How did she die? I don't know. She lived in Columbia when she died. Right. And what happened to Herschel? Herschel, um, the last thing I heard from him, he had gone to prison. <laughs> he had killed somebody. But I found out this past year, when I went to bury my Uncle Willis, I talked to some people around there, and they said he had gotten out of prison and uh, had uh, either married or went back to his old wife or something like that. But anyhow, he died. He's dead now. And he would be about your age, though, right? He'd be, no, he was a couple of years older than me. Okay. As the other two also, right? Yeah, the others would be, what, a year older than him. Okay. Now, I'm going to skip your mother for a minute. We'll go to Manuel. All right, Manuel was the uh, youngest. And um, Manuel, when I was a youngster, um, I remember him... Uh, just a little bit because he had a, an old tin Lizzie car that he would drive in Columbia, but I very seldom saw him because uh, I don't think he stayed there too long after I was born. He went in the service uh, and uh, because he was in the Calvary. I mean, when the Calvary was riding horses. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, and the only thing I remember about him is that they used to... Um, get letters from him every now and then. And they always had pictures, so I always felt like I knew him. Well, when he got out of the service, we had moved to East Chicago by then, and he came and stayed with us. What do you remember by him? Um, uh, quiet, uh, night. I liked him. I really liked him. He was a very quiet guy. I didn't have a lot to say. And, and every, he told little uh, uh, quiet jokes, you know, and he'd try to make you laugh, you know. But he was very, very neat, meticulous about how he dressed. He'd sit and polish his shoes for an hour. He had to be spit shine, you know. And uh, he was a very neat guy. Um, and he uh, he married a very good friend of my mother's after he came there. And uh, they lived with, with each other until well, she died and then he died. Manuel died? Yeah. What, they, was, what was his wife's name? Uh, Luella. When did each of them die? <sighs> Let's see. Lottie and I were married. It was uh, probably the early 60s when she died. And then he died uh, maybe two or three years later. Did they have any children? They had no children. What do you remember about Interesting, them? they both died of lung cancer. I mean, of throat cancer. And so they would have been, what, in their 30s or 40s at that time when they died? Oh, no, they had to be older than 
Yeah. Yeah, forties, I guess. Because they were almost the same age as no, well this is your uncle though, right? That's my uncle. So he's older than you. Oh yeah, he's older than me. Okay. Uh but he the reason I say forties, my dad died when he was thirty seven and I was ten. And uh, uh, Manuel would have come maybe two or three years later than that. Yeah, he had to be in his 40s. What do you remember about Luella? She was also a very, very nice, loving woman. A southern gal, strictly from down south, you know. And you could tell if you talked to her, boy, she was, not, she was not an educated person. But a very ambitious person. Boy, I tell you, she uh, she could stretch a penny. They uh, they bought a house. She worked like mad. Uh, she was one of those women. Uh, she and my mother too. You know, during the war, um, when all the men were gone, a lot of the jobs that used to be a man's job were given to women. And I, in East Chicago, that's where all the steel mills are. And a lot of the jobs in the steel mills, women had them. And uh, she had a job in the, uh, in the steel mills, so she made pretty good money. Uh, when they got married, Manuel, for some reason, he did not want to work in a steel mill, so he didn't. And uh, he got other jobs at other places. What kind of work did he do? Uh, he... Um, well, at first he worked at this huge restaurant that was up there in, in a little town next to East Chicago. And he worked there for a long time. And uh, I don't know, there were two or three different jobs that he had. Uh, I can't remember what they were. But he ended up, the last job he had, <laughs> well, he did was wash cars at a car wash place. Uh, I got to tell you, that Michael, I mean, Manuel was, uh, turned out to be an alcoholic. Now, I, I say he was an alcoholic, but you wouldn't know that unless you know him. Why is that? Uh, because he didn't carry himself as an alcoholic. He went to work every day at that car wash place. But when he got up in the morning, he made coffee, and he had a pint of gin, and he would pour gin in his coffee, and he'd drink that, that gin until it was gone that morning and uh, he'd work all day long and on the way home from work he'd get him another pint of gin and he would drink that and then in that evening he'd probably go get him another one and drink that before he went to bed. But he didn't kill him though, he got throat cancer. He got throat cancer and now let me tell you, and by the way if you talk to him you never know that. He, he, Stood straight, walked straight. You never saw him stagger or anything like that. He ended up in a nursing home because he was couldn't take care of himself after he got sick. And my sister was checking on him at the time. I was here. And she said, they said he really wasn't an alcoholic because they took all of that away from him and he had no problems whatsoever. But I thought he was an alcoholic and I didn't drink that much liquor. And... But um, uh, that was him, and, and that's what he did. But he and, and, and Luella bought that house, and uh, she was so proud of that house, boy, I'll tell you. And you said they had no children, No right? children. Okay. You know who we skipped was your grandmother, Elnora. Right. I didn't ask you about her. Okay, now, Grandma, um, again, as far back as I know about her was in Sturgeon when she married my grandfather. Where she came from before that, I don't know. But she had three brothers that, that I know of. I don't know of any sisters. Um, and those brothers, um, let's see, one of them's name was Bus. One's name was Emmett. Could you say Bus? Uh huh. B U S S, I guess. And one's name was Emmett, and the other one's name was uh, Burl, I think. 
Did you ever meet any of those people? I met them all. Uh, oh, there's another one. Cooney. Uncle Cooney. So these are your great uncles. These are my great uncles. Right. Now, did all of these people live in Sturgeon or in Columbia or where? The uncles. One of them lived in Sturgeon. That was Uncle Cooney. The main thing I remember about Uncle Cooney is that he collected marbles. I collect marbles today because of Uncle Cooney. Oh, so you were a kid at that time. I was a kid at that time. And when we'd go to see Uncle Cooney on one of those drives with my daddy, I would be on the weekend because they had to drive to, to, uh, uh, to Sturgeon. Um, he'd let you see his marbles. He might even let me play with a couple of them, but boy, he was watching them. He, he couldn't have none of those marbles. So <laughs> what did he do with them? Just collect them? I guess. That was just his thing, collecting marbles. What happened to his collection? Who knows? Some collector probably got them. <laughs> the uh, uh, let's see, and Uncle Emmett came to visit a couple of times, and, and um, who were the other ones? Burl and... Bus. Bus. Oh, Uncle Bus. <laughs> Uncle Bus, I think he might have lived in Kansas City. But he'd come to visit every now and then. And when he came to the house, he would steal stuff. He'd go into drawers and steal scissors or the salt shakers out of the kitchen. And all kinds of things. How do you know he was stealing stuff? Well, I didn't know it, but I'm just talking about the family would talk about it, you know. That was his little game that he used to play. And uh, everybody would be, they would look, who's got the salt shaker, you know? And nobody would know anything. And, uh, or where are the scissors, you know? And it, they were gone. Would he get well, he back? would stay for like a week. And then when he would leave, you go to our grandmother's house and there's all your stuff. He left it there, you know. <laughs> and, I, and he used to get a kick out of people saying, Has anybody seen the scissors, you know? No, I haven't seen them. He done stole them, you see. <laughs> that was Uncle Bus. I, that's what I remember about him. <laughs> what, what about Emmett? And Emmett, I don't, I don't know, it seems to me like I remember, I'm not really sure that I met Emmett. I just remember him talking about it, but I think I did meet him. He might have lived in, in, in Sturgeon, too. I'm not sure. And then Burl. You remember anything about him? Not too much. No, again, I think that's just I heard my grandmother talking about it. Right. Now, so you now my grandmother, my grandmother's daddy, um, came to live with them the last year or two before he died. Did you ever meet him? And I met him. So that's your great grandfather? Yes, he lived in Columbia in that house. What was his name? I don't know. And uh, he would have to be born way back he had to in the be 1800s. Oh, 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 man. Because what I remember about him, the only thing I remember about him is that when he was there, uh, they had a chair that they had cut a hole in the, in the chair so they could sit him on it and they put a pan underneath so he could go to the bathroom. <laughs> he was in pretty bad shape by that point. Yeah. Do you know anything about him? Where he came from? Or what? Nothing. I know nothing about him. So, do you know your grandmother, do you have any idea what year she would have been born in? No. Or maybe how old she was when she died. Well, she was in her 80s when she died. And what year would you think that was? Um, gee, see, now my, my, my uh, uncle was 93 when he died. Was it 93 or 94? I forgot what I said. Which uncle? Willis. That was Willis, yeah. Willis. And... She had to be like 16 when she had him. Uh, so she would have been uh, 19, let's say, uh, 
10. And that was in 90, uh, I mean, it was in two, two, 2002. Uh, when he died. She would have been 110 in 2002. So she was born in about 1892, something like that? Yes. So that would mean that, that the old man that you talked about sitting in the chair was probably born... 15, 20 years before that. Right. You don't know whether he was a slave? No. Or was he an Indian? You know what? There's a good chance that he might have been the Indian. Because I remember him being, he wasn't dark. He was a bright skinned, but I don't remember what his hair looked like. Now, do you know who her mother was? No. So you don't know which one was the Indian? No. So there was an Indian and a black person or yes. Indian and a white person? Indian and a black person. So now your grandmother, Elnora, did she look uh, Indian or how did she look? She looked black. She was dark skinned. And um, uh, like I said, she had curly hair. And so, what do you remember about her? You didn't say anything about her, I don't think. Oh, I love my grandmother. Love my grandmother. She um, she was our babysitter. Uh, you know, when my mother and dad went to work, she would walk around to the house. And every morning as she was coming down the driveway on the side of our house, she'd be yelling, uh, Where are my sweethearts? Where are my babies? You know, and we'd be yelling, Grandma, Grandma. Every morning, and um, she would stay in your house with you all day. She would stay with us all day, or take us to the store. We, you know, you walked every place. Uh, we walked to the store, uh, uh, just anything. Uh, uh, or she liked ice cream. She'd send us down to the corner store and get ice cream cone, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, but she was there all day, every day, and uh, I used to like to sit on her lap, and she would have a. She's smoking her pipe, you know. She smoked a pipe too. She smoked a pipe too. And um, my mother and dad used to have all these little figurines, um, little animals and stuff that's sitting around on the tables. And I used to like to have her to take the, uh, like a little dog that had holes in the bottom of it and blow smoke through one leg so it would come out the other leg and stuff like that. And, oh, I love my grandmother. <laughs> Keep you entertained, huh? Yeah. So now she lived for a long time. I mean, that's the woman that you put in the, um, that you helped move the house. Put her in, yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. she lived until what, the 1980s or 1990? Yeah, well, she lived, uh, 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 she was 84. She, so she died like, like 15 years before her before son. Willis. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And then we have your mother now. So what do you remember? What, what's your earliest memories of her? Earliest memories? Yeah. Okay, I think we got about five minutes and uh, the tape's going to stop. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Let's see the earliest thing I remember of her. Of course, it was in Columbia. Um, and, you know, I remember her as a mother giving, fixing cereal for us and in the mornings and uh, uh, stuff around the house, you know, dressing us in the morning. And, and she would go to work um, every day with, at these people's house. Right. Did you ever go to the house and see the people and meet the people? Yeah. They what, do you, would, what do you remember about them? Don't remember about them too much, you know. You know, They would all pat you on the head and stuff like that. And I, they had a son that uh, every now and then I'd play in his sandbox outside. Um, and um, uh, other than that, I don't remember too much. But they had a big old house like this, you see. And um, uh, my mom and dad took care of that, of that. And every now and then, they'd take me out there for one thing or another. I don't know if it was because my grandmother wasn't available or what, but I'd stay for a little while. What kind of things did she like to do when she wasn't working? My uh, mother? Mm -hmm. I don't know. She used to visit a lot with the folks in the neighborhood, you know. Um, oh, there was a man that uh, used to write policy. You heard? Have you heard of that before? For insurance? 
No, 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 no. It's, it's a gambling thing. Mm -hmm. They're, uh, in those days they had a, it's like the lottery. And it, two times a week, they would draw numbers. Oh, like numbers. The numbers man, you see. And uh, she and my grandmother would go together. It only cost like a nickel or a dime to play. But if you won, you win like five dollars, you see. And woo, that was big money in those days. So every now and then they'd come up with an extra nickel or dime. You think maybe you inherited some of those traits? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. And they would, uh, and they would um, uh, play the numbers. And uh, so they look forward whenever they get a little money together. You know, he would come around regularly, but they would only they didn't have money all the time. But every now and then they'd come up with an extra nickel or dime. And um, uh, they looked forward, just waiting for him to come to show them what the numbers were. Did they ever win? And they, <laughs> I remember two times when they won. And <laughs> I shouldn't say this. As my, my, my mother is up there looking at me. She's going to say, don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. You know what she and my grandmother would do? They'd go buy them a half pint of liquor. <laughs> would they share it with anybody? They had that half pint of liquor, I think, for two weeks. <laughs> okay, you know, we can, we can pause now. Let's take a pause.